Hi, Riz. Hi, oh. Hey! What's up, Angular developers? I'm Shai Resnick from HiRes.io, and today it's part three of Prepare for NG2. In this episode, we're gonna learn why dollar scope inheritance is bad, how writing to properties is flaky, and how to use the controller as syntax instead. So today we are going to get rid of dollar scope. But I love dollar scope. Why does it have to go? <laughs> Great question, Bonnie. By the way, this is Bonnie. Hi. Well, you see, dollar scope introduces three main problems. Problem number one, depending on your parent scopes. Coming back to a weird dashboard app, we see the headline and the search input. Let's focus on them for this episode. And here is the main template. So as you can see, we have this div, which is controlled by the dashboard controller. And inside of it, we have a couple of divs. And this one is controlled by the search controller. You can see that I've colored the dashboard div in green and the nested search controller in yellow one inside of the other oh it's like it has a little baby yeah we also have this search input and we bind it to the search term on the search controller so it's on the dollar scope so if we change the value here we should see it here and voila magic now let's do a fun experiment. Let's move this search term property up a scope to the dashboard controller. And we still see the value rendered in the search input. Why is that? Because in Angular, child scopes inherit from their parent scopes all the way up to the root scope. This is exactly what I love about Angular. No, it's bad. But... Bad. Here's why. Let's say another developer adds a new controller named middle controller right between the dashboard and the search. Now, if she decides the middle controller also needs a search term property of its own and decides to add it, she will probably break our app without even knowing it and enter a word of pain. Whoa, dude. You see, when our apps are small, we can sprinkle some nested ng controllers and it's fine. But as we get bigger, this invisible scope inheritance voodoo becomes a nightmare. So I think scopes and human beings should follow the same rules. If you're over a certain age, stop depending on your parents. Move away from home and find your own isolated place. But Shai, you're over 30 and still living with your parents. Shut up, Bonnie. Problem number two, writing to the wrong scope. Writing to properties using ng-model can also be an issue. For example, let's get rid of this middle controller and we'll add two watch expressions. One on the dashboard section and one in the search section. We can see that both of them render the same search term property. But if we'll change the value in the input now, we see that <gasps> the parent value doesn't change. Wait, what? Exactly. This is because we're missing a dot. Oh, now it makes sense. Not Bonnie. Even Mishko said it a few years ago. Whenever you have ng model, there's got to be a dot in there somewhere. If you don't have a dot, you're doing it wrong. Basically, if we will add a containing object to our dashboard controller, and change the reference, we should see it working just fine. This is because Angular uses prototype inheritance for its scopes and we'll learn about it in a different course. These problems are a major part of what people like to call scope soup and we should try to avoid it. No more scope for me! Problem number three. In Angular 2... <laughs> Come on. I'm sorry to inform you that dollar scope has passed away. So basically we won't have dollar scope, meaning that the less we use it, the easier it will be to migrate our apps in the future. And these are the problems with dollar scope and why it must die. <laughs> so now what, what can we do about it? The first step towards the future is to use the controller as syntax. Controller as is a feature that allows us to switch from using dollar scope to using the controller instance itself. 
First, let's reset our changes. We can delete our watch expressions. Now we can go to the dashboard controller and remove the data holder object. And finally, we go to the search controller and recreate the search term property. Now back to our main template. To use the controller as we simply add to our ng controller value the as keyword followed by a name. This name now represents the search controller instance in our template and the as keyword tells Angular to change the location of its bindings. This means that Angular will stop looking for values on the dollar scope and instead look for them on the controller instance represented by the this keyword which is also the as name in our template. So it's the same. Thing. Oh, another thing, controller instances, unlike scopes, don't prototypically inherit from their parents. So if we'll move our search term property back to the dashboard controller, it won't render in our input, which is a very good thing. If we do want to render it though, we can give the dashboard controller an as name and specifically refer to it. Now finally we can get rid of our dollar scope injections. And this basically solves all of the problems mentioned before. And as we'll see in future episodes, using the controller itself as the binding object is the same approach taken in Angular 2. But what if I need to add a watch expression? If you must add a manual dollar watch expression for some reason, you can still inject dollar scope and use it. But think twice before you use it because inexperienced developers can accidentally use its powers for evil. So just to recap, what we've learned today is that dollar scope inheritance is bad, writing to properties is flaky and it won't exist in Angular 2. And we also learned that we should use controller as instead because it has no prototype inheritance, it lets us have a clear reference in our templates and it binds to the controller instance itself, which is the same as in Angular 2. But we are not done yet. So we got rid of dollar scope, but now we have to deal with a new set of problems and fix them. Want to know how? Watch the next video.